Hello everyone, my name is Carlos and on this video I'm going to show you how to upload multiple journal entries using one single CSV file. Here on my screen I have the CSV file that I will be using to upload the journal entries to NetSuite. For purposes of this video, I decided to highlight the columns in the CSV and that's because th these sections represent a different area or function within NetSuite. Let's start with external ID here on the left. External ID is a unique ID that you need to attach to each transaction in NetSuite. As you can see, I decided to use one, two, three for this first journal entry that I have here. You need to use the same, in, in case of journal entries, you need to use the same external ID for each line within a journal entry. In this case, I have, since I have three journal entries, then I have three different set of unique IDs. Okay. Second, we have this section right here. This represents the header or mainline section of a journal entry. If we go to NetSuite, we can see here that we have this section right here and this other section right here. As you can see, if we go back to the Excel, I'm, I'm using only one row per journal entry for the date and the memo. And that's because in a journal entry form, we only have one memo field here and one date field here. Okay. And the other section is the line level section of a journal entry. As you can see, I have location, I have line description, I have this custom segment, accounts, debit, credit, and the vendor. And you will notice that for some of these fields, I'm not using the name in NetSuite. I'm using the internal IDs. So for example, for account, instead of using the account number or account name on the shadow accounts, I'm using their internal IDs. That's always recommended because internals, internal IDs never change. You may go through a chart of accounts restructuring in your company. You may change the name or the number, but the internal ID never will never change. And if you have a CSV template uh, saved in your company, uh, you can still use it in the future, future because that information will never change, right? So that, that way you will avoid errors in your future CSV uploads. Okay, uh, another important, important thing to note is obviously with journal entries, you need to make sure that the corresponding credits and debit always balance. Okay, so let's go to NetSuite. Let's go and import this CSV. Choosing transactions. And I will import journal entry. I will look for my CSV file. In this case, I'm using one single CSV, CSV file to upload this journal entry, but we can also, if I wanted to, I could also use the multiple file approach. In this case, I'm adding the journal entries. So I'm choosing add and for now, I'll skip over these advanced options here. In future videos, I'll talk about a little more about this section of the import assistant steps. Okay. Now, this section, right, this page right here is very, very important. We have different sections. So let me go first over the left section. This section right here represents your the fields on your CSV. And on the right, we have the fields in NetSuite. And in the middle, we have their corresponding mappings. One thing to note is as you go in here on this section and start mapping the corresponding information, you need to be aware of where this black arrow sits. So for example, right now, it is sitting on this row right here. So if I wanted to, for example, 
change the location, I have to first click on the location row and then do a corresponding mapping. But in this case, I'll go over to this row right here because I'm adding additional mappings. So you can see we have some fields with a green check and others don't have that green check. That's because they are not currently mapped. So I'll map the vendor field here. So you can see it populated, populated this row right here. I need to again click on this row to go back to this row. And in this case, since the vendor field in the journal entries sits on the sits on this section of the lines of the journal entry, then I need to make sure that in NetSuite I select that field in this section, the journal entry line section. Okay. In this case, vendor is the entity name in NetSuite. And um, I also want to map the line description. Okay. So I chose the line from the CSV. And again, since the description, the line description sits on the line section of the journal entry, then I need to go to the import assistant and make sure I'm selecting line description from journal entry line. Another very important thing, thing is to select the internal IDs for mapping. So for location, I'm not using names. I'm using internal ID. Same thing for this custom segment. Same thing for account. And we can click next. In this case, I'm not saving this template, so I can go ahead and click run. And then I can go in here to check the corresponding status of my upload. I'll click refresh. You see, in this case, I was able to upload three journal entries. We can go to the journal entries page and we can see them here. Go to one journal entry. So you can see I have the corresponding date, the corresponding journal entry, the corresponding memo, the amount here, the corresponding account, corresponding line description, location, vendor, and they are they equal the information that I have on the CSV. So to recap, if you are new to NetSuite and CSV uploads, I know it can be intimidating at first, but remember, it's just a matter of practice. And please, please make sure to use those internal IDs when possible. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up and please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to find more accounting software th tips, make sure to visit our website at www.fusiontaxes.com.